This is a small cherry blank around six inch and that's going to be a simple bowl. Uh, I'm going to turn it on a screw chuck, so we need that. This is a Vicmark three-in-one screw chuck and now I need a hole in the center of the blank. So this blank was cut uh, obviously with a plywood disc so there's no center hole. If it had been drawn with dividers like these uh, then we'd know where the center was. So I'm just going to eyeball this and see how we go. The more you eyeball stuff the better you get at it. Oh not too bad. So. I'll go there, but if you don't have that and you want to find centre, then you can set the dividers to about right and just draw a series of arcs holding the, the point out on the edge of the blank and you'll see I was absolutely dead right. I'm very impressed with myself there. So need to drill a hole in the middle. Uh, the drill is the same diameter as the shank on the uh, screw chuck. And I drill the hole more or less upright. It doesn't matter if it's a couple of degrees off. Now, I don't need all that screw, um, so I use some little plywood discs just to reduce the effective length. And that should be all right. That's probably something you wouldn't do at home. You can do it at a slightly slower speed. With a round blank, you shouldn't do yourself too much of an injury. Initial cuts just sweep the edge through the corner. Remove the corner by sweeping the edge through an arc into the wood. Then across the bottom, take a little shear cut with the bevel riding back towards centre. That's for the base. All I need at this stage is a foot on the roughed out shape. And having roughed out the outside, now I need to put the uh, screw chuck on uh, so that I can grip the bowl by the foot and hollow it. And here we have the step jaws. And the next thing is to drill a depth hole. I don't normally measure the depth because I've made thousands of these bowls, but if you want to make sure you don't go through the bottom, uh, use a depth drill. You'll notice these have little notches which I've ground on the high speed grinder, help me know how deep I'm going. Rest is just a little too high, so I'll drop that out of the way. This is a half inch bowl gouge, which I'll use to hollow it out. Basically lining the bevel up with the direction I want to go, which is towards the center, and keep the tool on its side so the gouge is facing away from you. So that's all we need to do at this stage. Uh, this is a roughed out bowl. And normally these would go into a, uh, a box, probably a big cardboard box full of them for maybe six months, eight months. Uh, the old rule of thumb is a year per inch of board thickness um, for drying plus a year. Now you're not going to want to hang around for two years to do that. You've taken a lot of the inside out so it's already going to be moving just because you've adjusted the stresses in the wood. Um, normally you just leave that maybe for six months and then have a go. We're going to try and speed things up, stick it in the microwave for a couple of minutes so it'll come out hot, too hot to handle. Um, and it might move, it might not, it's cherry, it's a stable wood anyway. So off we go. So here we are with it remounted and as you can see it's uh, out of whack. Before I can throw up the outside, I've got to get a stable surface on the inside, which is a little square shoulder, which I do with the three quarter inch square end scraper. That's just going to go straight in, create a little shoulder so I can flip the bowl around and expand the uh, jaws here in onto that shoulder. So just make one more, just to be sure, a little bit wider. And at this stage it also pays to trim up the rim, much more difficult later.
And as you can see, as I spin it around, you can see the eccentricity. And so the jaws are just going to go right into that shoulder. Now with the outside fully exposed, I can do all the outside shaping and uh, basically finish the outside. So first I trim up the foot and then just use the lower wing of the tool to skim the rim of the base. And then I can flip the tool over, have the bevel riding and take a shear cut back to centre. Now I need to do the side using to the left of the point of the tool and just drag the gouge up the surface just to uh, true it up at this stage. So if you need to move the rest, if you find you're running out of rest, just move it around and always come in from the top face. If you work off the face, uh, then you're likely to tear away the end grain. Still a little bit more to come off here. So the idea at this stage is to get away all the flat areas, everything you don't want in the final piece, and then work out what you can do with what's left. So before I do any of the final shaping, I need to decide on the size of the foot and I'm going to use these shark jaws. I need to get this back to the original machine size, which means that I can make a foot that size and the jaws won't mark the wood, which is a major advantage of these chucks. So that's about right. It was machined round, then cut. Then I can feel the spur here on one side of the jaw and just bring it in with the other side. So I only need to watch one point and then that diameter gets transferred to the base. I need to bring the rest round, uh, just about centre height. Now the idea now is to make a mark with the left point which lines up with the right point. And if you get the centre between the two points, uh, it should be fairly easy because you can uh, gauge where the left point needs to make the mark in relation to the, to the outside of the foot and also to centre. I'm going to get it wrong first and so I need to move the left point over half the distance between the right point and the line the left point is making which is there and that is the diameter I need for the foot. So the next thing is to set that diameter and I normally use the 3-8 spindle gouge for that. This is a fingernail grind, it's got a fairly long bevel hand planted on the rest and just squeeze the tool in. So once I've finished roughing the foot, uh, then I can drag the gouge back a little bit, uh, but basically I need a heavier tool to do the shaping of the profile, and on this occasion I'll do that with the half inch bowl gouge. Having used the pull cut to come around the curve, uh, then I'm going to take a shear cut with the tool pointing in the direction I'm going from the uh, just above the foot. So this is just going to be a simple bowl and I keep an eye on the upper horizon up here so I can see what I'm going to be doing. If you find you're going out into space, you have the wrong trajectory on the cut, just flow out into space, and then come back and pick the cut up uh, on a smooth part of the wood, a little bit lower down and just go in slightly deeper. That way you'll maintain a smooth curve. So that's, yep, that's a pretty good surface straight off the tool. A little bit of burnish mark here, but there's nothing here which uh, would stop you starting to sand really with probably 180 grit, maybe 120 might be used, but uh, that would be fine. Most of you would be delighted to have a surface like that off the gouge. But in fact, I can probably improve it using the shear scraper. It's a one inch shear scraper, and so we'll have a look at what that does. We'll just see how that's going. 
Right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, now we can go ahead with the top half. Just make sure as you're cutting that the point of the cut is in the lower half of the edge, otherwise you're likely to have a catch. So that's a great improvement. Uh, almost a pity to scratch it with abrasives. Uh, now I need to do the base. I use the skewed shear scraper flat on the rest and just ease it back and take the corner into the wood so I get a little bit of decoration. Then I can use the long point just to clean up the left side of that, bring it back again and just have another little brush across the centre to clean up the corner in the detail. A little bit rougher than the uh, side, but okay. Having done that, I go to the 3-8 spindle gouge to complete the rim. For a precise cut here, I need to pin the tool to the rest, raise the handle to pivot the edge into the wood. Once the bevel's riding, you can roll it very slightly clockwise, but make sure at the end of the cut it's back on its side. Then you come round, get the bevel riding on the bottom of the profile and just ease it into the top of the foot. You can rotate it very slightly counterclockwise to get a bit of shaving, drop the handle, and then roll the tool over, use the left wing, which is the lower piece, just stroke the outer lip of the base, and that'll give you a nice little rounded foot. Well, I'm thinking this looks a bit plain, so I think I'll stick in a bead up here. So I need to move the rest around. And for this cut, still using the 3-8 spindle gouge, I'm gonna pin it to the rest and essentially just take the end of the handle round in a little circle anti-clockwise and that'll dip the edge in and out of the wood. Now that might look difficult, uh, but the problem is that once you get the hang of it, which it doesn't take too long, you tend to cover everything with beads. 